All right, so um, I'm here with um, Liz de Jesus, um, who has written lots of different books, including um, Shattered Frost. And um, we were just talking about the premise of, of the books, and it sounds really, really interesting. Um, can you just uh, let people know what the books are about? Um, yeah, the first book in the series is titled First Frost, and it's about a girl that helps her mom run a fairy tale themed museum, and she finds out that fairy tales and magic are real. And she's also a descendant of Snow White, so that plays into the story sure. very, it's so much fun. And then yeah. um, in the first book, her mom gets kidnapped, and she has to use the items from the museum to try to rescue her mom. So that's pretty much the plot for the first book. And then in the sequel, Glass Frost, it picks up right where the first one ends, so it's constantly like action, and right. it's just always moving. Right. And in the second book, um, she has to stop some evil witches from stealing Cinderella's glass slippers. Okay. And then in the third book, in Shattered Frost, Bianca gets into even more trouble, and she finds a way into Wonderland. So she has to find Captain Bluebeard's key right. to try and set free his uh, ghost wives. So it, it's, it's yeah, just so that's, much fun. That, yeah. that's, that does sound like a lot of fun. And yeah. and um, your your uh, comic Zombie Ever After also takes place. Uh, has to do with fairy tales. Yeah. So what what um, made made you so interested in fairy tales? It's been forever. Like it, um, I grew up in Puerto Rico, and we weren't very close to a, a library. So the only thing that I really had access to was fairy tales. Right. So um, that was just all that I read. I read Grimm's fairy tales, Hans Christian Andersen, right. Charles Perrault, all everything that I could get my hands on. So that's always been. Uh, something that's been very close to my heart, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I find one of the things that's so interesting about them is that um, they're they're timeless. Yes, like, absolutely. Like yeah. Disney, Disney can adapt them, you know, hundreds of years later, and it still makes sense. Yeah, it, um, mostly because we find something to relate to with any of these stories, whether yeah. it's Cinderella or Snow White. Um, or Red Riding Hood, we find something that we can relate to with these characters, and it's just timeless, and it's one of the reasons why we still gravitate toward these, these characters. And um, is there anything as in particular that made you focus on a mother-daughter relationship for the, for the Frost series, or at least for the first book? Um, I have an excellent relationship with my mom. My mom's like my best friend, so I wanted to incorporate like a positive... Uh, relationship between a mother and daughter, especially you know, like uh, with with my series, mostly because uh, it reflects how I am with my mom. Right. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's basically yeah. Yeah, I, I think that it always um, helps when we can have um, good female characters that people can can look to. Um, there, there does seem to be a lot in the YA space, which is really exciting, yeah. but traditionally not as many, so it's always nice to see some, some stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Yeah. Um, and I also write uh, different genres. I have my novel, Morgan, which is um, horror with some LGBT and uh, with werewolves and vampires, right. and it's about a detective that gets bitten, right. and uh, she gets turned into a werewolf. And then she goes on an adventure, and she falls in love with uh, the uh, vampire, which is based off of Elizabeth Bathory. Okay. She's one of the first female serial killers. Okay. And I figured, wouldn't that be interesting for a hero to fall in love with the villain? And then it gets to a point where you're just like, well, who's the hero and who's the villain? So sure. I like kind of playing with that. Sure. Yeah. And uh, do you see any parallels between... Um, Right now, you know, fairy tales are really huge. If you look at Once Upon a Time, yeah. Fables, which just ended, yeah. and then vampires and werewolves are really big. Do you see anything, any crossover between the two? Any anything that you find in common that that, that you find about them both? Um, I think so. You know, I think there's different ways that that you can kind of play with uh, the different mythologies with the werewolves and the vampires and fairy right. tales. I am working on a collection of short stories titled Mugshots, which is fairy tales princesses doing bad things oh awesome so it's like sex drugs and rock and roll okay uh and one of the stories is based off of red riding hood and in that one there's werewolves 
So that's that's a way to kind of like mix it and play yeah. around with it. Sure. And really, what I do is I just I, I'm trying to have fun. Yeah. So if I'm not having fun writing these stories, my reader, my fans are not gonna have fun right. reading the stories. Right. So that's really that's always the most important thing is just like have fun, sure. do what you love, follow your passion. Yeah. So. So that short story collection sounds amazing. When does it come out? I don't know because I'm still working on it. <laughs> I'm working on so many things because right now I'm working on uh, Ruby Frost, which is book four in the series, Mugshots, another middle grade book, and uh, I'm always I, I'm also working on another uh, comic book series. So I'm, I'm always working yeah. on something. So. Well, that's awesome. It sounds like you have something for every age group. You have a middle grade book coming yeah. out. You have the YA uh, yeah. Frost series. You have the, it sounds like the, the short story is going to be more adult collection. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I like to think that I write for different sides of myself because the Frost series is definitely for the 12-year-old me. <laughs> so I'm right. like, ah, yeah. it's like, uh, that's, that's kind of how I write. And then, you know, like the horror stories are more for like the darker side because everybody's right. got a dark side. Right. Everybody's got, you know, like that one side that, right. that's interested in like uh, werewolves and vampires right. and you know the darker stuff right. and um, I also write gen- general fiction you know so there, right. this, I, I just like to read different genres also sure. so I like to write different genres and mostly it's because I like to uh, explore different types of writings explore different types of storytelling sure. that kind of stuff you know so so uh, my last question is um, did, did growing up in Puerto Rico does that do you feel that that shapes your writing? Um, oh, yeah. um, the way does it color the way you look at things? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because um, for me, it's uh, it makes everything just seem a lot brighter, much more dramatic, <laughs> you know. Sure. Um, and uh, I like to think a, a little bit more poetic because you know, like the Hispanic culture has always just been. Uh, uh, how do you say? You have a lot of great writers and poets sure. and sure. like people that like to express themselves, yeah. no matter whether, whether it's with dancing or music or writing or right. poetry. So, right. yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, uh, definitely. If you look at you know one of the great Cuban revolutionaries, Jose Marti, mm-hmm. was a poet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so there's absolutely. definitely a huge intersection of art and and uh, politics and everything yeah. you know in the, in the culture. And Pablo Neruda was one right. of my favorite poets as well and then you have Gabriel Garcia Marquez and then you have uh, writers like Esmeralda Santiago and Isabel Allende. There's just like forces of nature, right. you know? Right. So it's like uh, I do like to think that me being Hispanic definitely contributes to the different aspects of my writing even though I don't necessarily write uh, in Spanish. You know, but I do think that that passion does come through. Cool. Well, thanks a lot for talking with us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Absolutely.